All right, so this week we're going to be talking about development in middle childhood. Um, middle childhood school age, um, this is one of the funnest age groups to talk about. I know I may be saying that over and over again because I like all of them. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, let's get this started. So um, back to our buddy Piaget. Um, this is what Piaget called concrete operational. You can see this stage in here in the middle where um, uh, he talked about this as being from six to 12. Um, kids are using symbols. They're using internalized mental operations. What he means by this is that they are able to um, consider problems um, in their heads. Um, they're able to transform and compute, um, combine, order stuff um, in order to answer questions. Um, he notes, uh, Piaget notes that their kids are better at this in um, adolescence than they are at this point in middle childhood um in terms of doing things in their head without a concrete um representation of the problem itself um again that's why we call this uh concrete operational right because kids are able to do these more logical systematic um kinds of uh, problem solving but they do it better when they have um something tangible to work with to look at um, so again, uh, kids are also showing one way that we see this concrete operational um, uh, thinking is increased cl classification skills. So we can think about things as belonging to more than one category, right? So um, younger kids, um, they are either beads or they are yellow beads. Um, in middle childhood, kids start to be able to say, okay, in this picture, um, there are more beads than there are yellow beads. Um, because yellow beads is a subset of beads. Um, a lot of the uh, research on this um, by Piaget as well as Neo-Piagetians has been critiqued because of the fact that the ways that we discuss um, these questions or the ways these questions are posed are really not um, using typical ways of talking, right? These are not normal language patterns. Um, is are there more yellow beads or are there more beads, right? That's not a common way to pose the question. So um, the idea here may have been that part of why um, Piaget underestimates kids in this age group um, or in the early childhood age group um, in regards to classification skills is because the question is confusing. So kids are having trouble figuring out what it is that the adult in question is trying to get from them, right? What do you mean? Are there more beads or are there more yellow beads, right? Um, so we also see increased linguistic skills, tons more um, in terms of vocabulary. Um, older kids are also better at checking in with their audience. Um, uh, getting back to, or as I was saying, um, they are also good at giving um, ongoing feedback. Um, what ongoing feedback to a speaker looks like may be very different in different communities. Um, in some cases, nodding is appropriate. Um, uh, in some cases, saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. I found myself saying, uh-huh, a lot lately. Even in Zoom meetings, when I'm on mute, I know I'm on mute, um, but I still have to give the, it is normative for me to give that in my community, for me to give that um, nonverbal feedback, um, even though they can't hear it. <laughs> um, so again, these uh, this is concrete operations because these mental actions are concrete and that they are um, better and they are facilitated by having concrete um, uh, things that kids can manipulate um, or look at um, to enact this. You can see that this has influenced um, some of early education or, or uh, elementary education. Um, if you think about the fact that we have um, blocks and um, blocks that fit together and different shapes of blocks for kids to use in solving math problems um, often in um, elementary school. Um, so uh, this is different than pre um, preschool. Um, different um, than the pre-operational um, because they can think about more than one aspect of a problem, right? So they're more organized and they're thinking they're more flexible. They can not only think about 
um, the problem that they're working on, but also can at the same time contemplate their plan um, and the next steps in their plan. So they're much more planful um, in their problem solving at this point. Um, I always think about this in terms of um, the kids who used to whoop me in checkers because um, I apparently never got very good at checkers and um, pardon me, the dog wants um, in on this conversation. Um, she wants to talk to you about middle childhood today, apparently. Um, uh, so I never got very good at checkers, um, but by middle childhood, kids are able to think, okay, so if I do this, the other pe person might do that, right? So there's some, some strategic requires thinking about both what your plan is, but also what somebody else's plan is. Um, and that was her debut. That's all you get. Um, and um, uh, they also would double jump me. I did not grow up with the rules of, the, of double jumping being an option. So I was not very good at planning to, to have somebody double jump me or to um, guard against being double jumped. So um, the kids loved, uh, when I worked at a child care center, loved playing um, checkers with me because they'd always kick my butt. Um, yes, so um, uh, conservation kids are doing this, um, answering the conservation tasks, both um, volume and number um, and, and others uh, uh, well they're able to um, give different kinds of um, responses to what's going on here. So they can say, um, one would be uh, an identity rationale. These were equal to start with, nothing was added, so they're the same. Um, the liquid is higher, but the glass is thinner, so this is talking about compensation. Or vis reversibility, if you pour it back into the first one, it'll be the same. Okay, so um, some um, Neo Piagetians um, and other researchers have argued um, what is it about this new um, ability to understand conservation? Where did they get this? Um, Piaget argued that all of this cognitive growth that kids were making across um, developments was about assimilation and accommodation. So, going back, way back um, to um, our first uh, week talking about theory. Assimilation and accommodation is they're gathering data from everyday experience. Um, does that fit with my existing theory of how things work? Um, in which case I can um, uh, assimilate it into what I've already got. Or do I need to um, think about um, new rules to, in order to better best explain this phenomenon that I just saw, this uh, particular experience, right? in which case we'd be talking about accommodation. Um, other researchers more contemporarily talk about memory capacity, which increases at this age, um, accumulation of knowledge. So if we're thinking about um, cognition in terms of more network theories, so if you have more um, bits of knowledge that you know, you have a broader network of info that you can draw on from which to um, categorize and uh, kind of locate new info, um, and um, also development of cognitive strategies. I'll give you a little bit more on the cognitive strategies in, um, in the slides, and we're going to talk about too much to, um, this week, um, person to person, um, but uh, we're going to focus on memory strategy for this little explanation, and I'll, I'll let you get into cognitive strategies a little bit more if, you, if you're interested. Okay. Um, so neo piagetians as I said, think about knowledge as going through stages, but argue that um, it happens at different rates in different domains. This is part of a throwback to what we talked about last week with the pre-operational kids, because in pre-operations, um, they're having trouble, uh, or they may totally understand a, a concept in one uh, domain, but not be able to transfer it to another domain. Transfer is difficult for kids um, for a while, not just in uh, preschool, but through middle childhood as well. Um, but uh, neo Piagetians would argue that while we get, they, it is common for kids to get um, conservation, say in one um, example, they may not get it in another because we're working at uh, different rates in different domains. Okay, 
So how does memory impact cognition? One, um, we've got increased speed and capacity um, in these middle childhood years. Um, the span, so how many digits kids can remember increases. Um, they're much faster at retrieving info. Um, and the capacity or the memory span as I have it here and speed are interrelated. So if you are running uh, slow, and this will come back into play when we're talking about um, older adults, if your cognition is slower, you have less time to get through all the tasks to get through processing, right? This is how we have um, understood it and it, it bears out in, um, in research. Um, you have less time to get to the stuff and you may um, not be able to um, have as much capacity because um, you got, it was slower to get it. So it's like there's a, um, a window of um, how much you can keep in your working memory to uh, go to, to access or to retrieve um, a, a given amount of capacity. Um, the other part is the expanded knowledge base, which we talked about um, as one of the things that Neo-Piagetians think is um, making kids do better at this. Um, you know more things. If you know more things, you have a broader network of uh, info that you can connect things up to. Um, and the third is um, improved mem memory strategies. Um, so uh, any memory strategy that a kid is uh, using um, is going to be an example of two-sided thinking that was difficult for preschool um, or pre-operational kiddos because you're thinking both about what you want to do, your goal, but also what you have to go through to get there, right? Ah, so I want to get to the other side of the checkerboard and get kinged. And so I also um, need to do this and this and this. So I'm thinking about both my goal and what I need to do to achieve it. Um, the interesting thing about strategies, and again, I'm not gonna go, there's a little more on the, slot, on the um, slides than I'm gonna go into here, but the interesting thing about strategies is that kids do not logically eliminate strategies. Um, interesting work by Robert Siegler on this, where um, kids will reuse um, strategies that haven't worked a couple times before they eventually start going to efficient and effective strategies. Um, but it's not like, oh, one and done. Okay, well, that works. So I'm going to always do it that way again, right? Um, these uh, cognitive habits may be difficult to break um, and maybe more so for younger kids. Um, the other thing that may help kids with those strategies and using those strategies is the emergence of meta memory. So the ability to think about one's own thinking, right? So um, you're processing and you're thinking, ah, okay, so I know personally, I don't know about you guys, I know for me, um, colors are really helpful for me to remember. I've got all these books on my shelf behind my head. I will remember what color a book is. So, um, uh, the Arnett texts a couple years uh, it was red and then it was blue and then it was red and I'm like oh my gosh you guys are messing with me I need it to stay in the same color scheme otherwise I'm never gonna find that thing on my shelf again um, so uh, trying to figure out what the um, uh, what your strategies are that work for you um, can help you to choose ah, okay so I remember this is the strategy I can evaluate whether it's working for me or not. Okay. As I said, we don't always use different, uh, the best strategies, but kids eventually move towards um, the uh, most effective ones. Overall, we talk about the ways that kids use other cognitive um, skills to, um, bridge, to support problem solving as cognitive bridging strategies. So um, the ones that we talk about most for middle childhood, and these are the ones that are um, seeing the greatest increases, um, is attention. So the ability to sustain attention, um, to ability con to control attention. So this goes with uh, um, executive function as well, right? My ability to reflect on and uh, control myself, impulse control. Um, uh, we can also come up with attentional strategies. So what am I going to pay attention to first? How am I going to handle this? Um, talking to older kids about how they do 
um, Where's Waldo or other kinds of find uh, image finding um, problems is really interesting because they can tell you about, okay, so I'm just gonna look down each, you know, in columns down the side of the page or um, he's wearing stripes. So I just look for any stripes, any lines that are allowed. So anyway, um, attention is one of them. Uh, planning is another. Um, older kids, um, again, this is about using um, two-sided thinking. So thinking both about what your goal is, but also the moves uh, or the, the route to get there. And then metacognition. So you're thinking about your own thinking. Again, an uh, example of considering two or more -ish, uh, parts of a problem. So um, understanding how you think um, begin beginning to reflect on your own strategies. Okay, so we're going to leave that here and then we'll come back to emergent literacy for the second half of this um, lecture.